Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, Birmingham is actually quite a, a home to me. I went to Birmingham City University, not far from here, so it's nice to be back again here in Birmingham. So I'm a systems engineer. I've been at Fortinet for 18 months now. Um, before that, I was at a wireless vendor called Aruba. Um, I'm in the UK and I team. I'm going to talk to you about Zero Trust in principle and in practice. So being a systems engineer, um, I talk to a lot of customers, and a lot of customers are starting to ask about Zero Trust. It's kind of one of those terms like SD-WAN, SDN. Um, it's one of those terms that everyone's kind of talking about, but what really is it? So today I'm going to try and help you kind of understand that um, and then understand what Fortinet we are trying to kind of help you guys solve. So to kick things off, Zero Trust, why do we care about it so much? Well, this is, oh, I need to move to the next slide. Um, this is the old traditional perimeter security model. Um, this model was all well and good, but it's a little bit outdated, and it doesn't really hit today's needs and standards of where networks are now moving towards. Traditionally, we had um, threats on the outside, and everything inside the perimeter model was trusted. All the devices and the users that you allow on the inside of that trusted perimeter, you trust and you allow and you know that they're safe. Everything on the outside is bad. But in today's world, we're starting to move, move applications to SaaS applications, to public cloud, AWS, and Azure. And we're introducing more bring your own devices and IoT devices. That means that threats are now starting to appear inside, and I'm not moving it on the, um, on the clicker. Threats are now starting to appear inside as well. Typically, each employee brings around about three um, devices with them, an iPhone, a MacBook, um, an iPad. I'm a big Apple fan. Um, and so with that increase of bring your own devices and IoT devices brings additional threats. Devices that are no longer compliant, perhaps with IT administrators, those devices might have infected malware, they might be compromised in some sort of way. So now threats are appearing everywhere, not just on the outside, but also on the inside. So here at Fortinet, I've identified four kind of key trends, things that Fortinet are trying to kind of um, um, tackle Starting with the top left, by 2024, 70% of people will be using multi-factor authentication. So previously, you would just type your username and password in, you'd be allowed into the network, and you could access everything on the network, all the resources, all the applications. Now, we need to make sure that those users are verifying themselves to us, not just once, but multiple times. We need to know that the people on the network are who they say they are. Workforce is shifting as well to remote working. So people kind of worked from home a little bit before the COVID pandemic, remote workers, people work from cafes, et cetera, et cetera. But with COVID and the pandemic, that really started to increase. And so we've now got up to 30% an increase of remote working now. So we need to know that the people that are VPNing in and those remote workers, again, are who they say they are and also using the devices that we approve. 2025, there'll be 12 billion installed IoT devices onto the network. How do we scale for that? How do we know that those devices that are being added onto the network are ones that are compliant with the network and, again, aren't infected or compromised? And finally, hybrid IT. So again, moving applications to the cloud, um, out from the data center. How can we make sure that we're not tromboning traffic all the way through into the data center, back out to the cloud, not causing bottlenecks, latencies, et cetera? So what is the goal? Well, in the words of NIST's zero trust architecture, the goal um, is to prevent unauthorized access to data and services coupled with making the access control enforcement as granular as possible. What does that really mean? Well, we want to make sure that we're granting access based on the principle of least privilege. We're making sure that every user can only access the things that they're supposed to be accessing and not everything else. So Jane from finance can only access the finance servers. She can't be accessing your payroll information. Never trust, always verify. This is what zero trust really means. You do not trust anyone unless proven otherwise. And finally, verify the user device and the security posture. So what do I mean by that? Constantly verifying the user, constantly verifying that device, making sure that they're compliant, they've got the latest antivirus software, the latest operating system, they don't have infected, infected um, uh, viruses, and then security posture checking as well. So we're not just checking that device and that user once, but we're doing it multiple times over and over again because if something were to happen or if they were suddenly compromised, then we can quarantine them, stop them from getting on the network, et cetera. I can tell you everything about Fortinet and how we are seeing zero trust and what we're kind of seeing the world is going now. Um, but this is, hasn't moved on. 
Um, this is NIST's zero um, architecture. So NIST is a National Institute of Standards and Technology based out in the US. This is their a third party, what they believe Zero Trust are now, now becoming. So later at the end of this, I'll, I've got some links to some reports, some things you can read in your own spare time. Take a picture of it, read it in your own spare time. You probably won't because you've got better things to do. Um, but yeah, this is just what NIST are believing and what their transitioning of Zero Trust really means. So I've talked about Zero Trust. Um, it's one of those you know, fluffy words again. Gartner have coined a new term, Zero Trust Network Access. Really imaginative, it's really confusing as well, but it's basically the same thing. It's about accessing applications anywhere in the world and wherever you are in the world as well. So because of the, ri yeah, because of the rise in remote working, um, ZTNA has received more attention lately because of controlling access to applications regardless of where the user or the application resides. So again, with Zero Trust Network Access, we're verifying the users. Is the picture's gone? Um, we're verifying the users, the devices, the device health, and then again, giving them the least privileged access. Now, Gartner has reported last year that there's a huge increase in remote working, kind of highlighting many difficult um, needs that come with traditional VPN technology, so problems with scalability. Um, Simply the agility as well for environments to respond to those scalability and those increased VPN tunnels that are coming in. Um, and the large administrative burden as well that has been added on top of people that are now using VPNs to come in and access all the resources that were traditionally in that trusted network. Along with that, we've got the, uh, the, <laughs> the threat landscape. The threat landscape increased as well. Um, because of the COVID pandemic and a lot of people had to move home and start remote, remote working, that added a lot of strain onto VPN tunnels and head-end concentrators and VPN concentrators. So bad actors became aware of this and they started to attack VPN vulnerabilities a lot more as well. So we need to now make sure that those VPN concentrators or those VPN technologies are up to date and able to scale as well. And again, we're not giving access to everyone on the network, but only those applications that they should be accessing. So if that VPN or whatever was kind of compromised, only that certain application is compromised. So this is the evolution from traditional VPN to ZTNA, what I'm really talking about today here. So VPN's main aim was to extend the corporate network out to the remote user, um, but this was kind of back in the day when, I, like I said, resources were all in one single place. Now, with ZTNA, we're changing that underlying model completely. We're no longer establishing a full, single fat connection to the internal network. Instead, we establish specific connectivity to an application as and when needed via an access bro broker or proxy. Um, and so we're also, with Zero Trust, um, continuously monitoring that, that user as well. So the difference is with the traditional VPN, we're doing a one-time trust check. Once that VPN user logs into the network, they can go everywhere they want. They're checked once, that's it. They're giving access to the entire network on the network level. And then you're also allowing a single set of access rules for the VPN and nothing more granular. But with ZTNA, you're continually monitoring device, that posture of that device, that user, using multi-factor authentication, using device identity, checking they've got the latest antivirus software, et cetera. And then ZTNA is also giving access to specific applications only rather than the entire network. And then using granular access control, which can be different per user as well, so we're segmenting up users themselves from finance, so now Jane and Tom and finance have different um, access control sections per application and dependent on device posture details too. Now, there's lots of kind of different interpretations of ZTNA, but what at Fortinet are we trying to do? Well, Vort uh, well ZTNA is not a separate product that we sell. It's actually a feature of FortiOS, which is all of the operating, it's the operating system that runs in all of our products. So, FortiOS will act as the ZTNA access proxy and carries out zero trust checks and then provides process based application access to those checks once they're passed as well. And what do I mean by this? Well, ZTNA runs in Forti Client, that's our endpoint management software. It can do IPsec and SSL VPN, but for ZTNA, you don't need to do that. And I'll come on to why that's a good benefit. It runs in EMS as well, so that's our central management system that looks after all the little 40 client devices down at the bottom. It's in our 40 gates, our next gen firewalls, and it's in 40 SASE as well, our SASE platform. 40 gates and 40 SASE are acting as the ZTNA application proxy. And so on the proxies, you look after all the application control 
um, policies and then define the rules as to what criteria needs to be met to gain access to each application. Because of this, the connectivity happens transparently to the user as well. We're not doing VPN tunnels. What's happening is 40 Client is checking the posture of the device and the user. It's sending that information to 40 Client EMS, and EMS is telling the 40 Gate Firewall or 40 SASE. So when Client accesses the, those applications wherever they are, in the data center or in the cloud, the 40 Gate already knows if that device is compliant with the network or not, and they're ready to go. If a change were to happen, it would 40 client would notify EMS, et cetera, et cetera, and that 40 gate can stop that device from accessing the network. So that's how that continuous posture checking keeps happening. And so finally, from a user perspective, this means that it's exactly the same for them whether they're in the office or at home. The whole experience is exactly the same. The concept of zero trust is to treat users the same regardless of where they're working from. This in turn helps you achieve the strategic goal of providing constant user experience regardless of where they're working the same as a, different con as a constant level of security. So, a call to action. These are the kind of links that I just talked about, the kind of third party um, market research about zero trust. Feel free to take a photo, um, look at the links, read them in the spare time. I don't, but you probably won't either. Um, but we've got zero trust architecture, we've got the CISA zero trust matur uh, maturity report, we've got the um, NCSC materials as well on zero trust. Have a little read of those. Etc. So, thank you very much. My name is William Holmes, systems engineer here at Fortinet. Feel free to come talk to me at the booth later on about Zero Trust or any of the products that I've talked about today. And uh, I've finished four minutes before the deadline. Thank you very much. William, thank you very much indeed. <laughs>